Good evening. Good evening. Um, in the beginning, in the beginning, there was Mad Dog Vincent Lopez standing in front of me, fresh out of jail, his head shaved in the mermaid room of the Upstage Club in Asbury Park. He told me that he had a money-making outfit called Speed Limit 25. They were looking for a guitarist, and was I interested? I was broke, so I was. But the, uh, so the genesis point of the E Street Band was actually a group that Vinny Lopez asked me to join to make a few extra dollars on the weekend. Uh, shortly thereafter, I met Dan Federici. He was, uh, yes. He was draped in a three-quarter length leather, had his red hair slicked back, with his wife, Flo, she was decked out in a blonde bouffant wig, and they were straight out of Flemington, New Jersey. So, whoa, Flemington. <laughs> so Vinny, Danny, myself, along with bass player Vinny Roslin, were shortly woodshedding out of a cottage on the main street of a lobster fishing town, Highlands, New Jersey. I first saw Gary Talent, along with Southside Johnny, when they, uh, when they dragged two chairs out onto an empty dance floor as I plugged my guitar into the upstage wall of sound. I was the new kid in town, and these were the guys who owned the place. And they sat back and looked at me like, all right, come on, come on, punk, bring it. Let's see what you got. And uh, I reached back, and I burnt their house down. Uh, and, uh, the Gary Talent's great bass playing and his Southern gentleman's presence has anchored my band for 40 years. Thank you, Gary. Thank you so much. Then one night, I wandered in the upstage and I was dumbstruck by a baby-faced 16-year-old David Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> Davy, Davy was very, very unusual. He was a young black man who, in 1968, Asbury Park, which was uh, not a peaceful place, he crossed the tracks in search of musical adventure, and he blessed us with his talent and his love. He was my roomie in the early two guys to one six dollar motel room years of the E Street Band. He was good. He kept his socks clean. It was love. <laughs> Vinny was carrying around a snake around his neck at that time, so I lucked out with Davey as my roommate. <laughs> and Davey's the only member of the group who ever actually lived on E Street. <laughs> so he was, uh, I walked in. And he was on the club's organ. And Davey is reserved now, but at the time, he danced like Sly Stone, and he played like Booker T, and he poured out soul and blues and jazz and gospel and rock and roll, and he had voicings on his keyboard that we just never heard before. It was just so full of soul and so beautiful. Davey, uh, uh, love you, and we still miss you so, you know? But predating all of this was Steve Van Zant, <laughs> singer, frontman, <laughs> frontman. <laughs> and here's the frontman. I walked into the Middletown Hullabaloo Club. He was the frontman for a band called The Shadows. He had on a tie that went from here down to his feet. And I, all I remember is he was singing the Turtles Happy Together. And during a break at the, at the Hullabaloo Club in New Jersey, you played 55 minutes on and five minutes off. And if there was a fight, you had to rush back on stage and start playing again. So I met, met Stevie there, and he soon became my great uh, 
bass player first, great then great guitarist, my consigliere, he's my uh, dependable devil's advocate whenever I need one. He is the invaluable ears for everything that I create. I always get a hold of him. And uh, uh, fan number one, so he's my comic foil on stage, uh, my fellow producer, arranger, and my blood, 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 blood brother for so long. <laughs> so, uh, Stevie, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's keep rolling for his, uh, as many lives as they'll give us, all right? <laughs> years, years and bands went by, Child, Steel Mill, the Bruce Springsteen Band, they were all some combo of the above-mentioned gang. And then I scored a solo recording contract with Columbia Records, and I argued to get to choose my recording Sidemen, which was a misnomer in this case, if there ever was one. So I chose my band and my great friends, and we finally landed on E Street, a rare rock and roll hybrid of solo artistry and a true rock and roll band. But one big thing was missing. So, <laughs> it was a dark, it was a dark, it was a dark and stormy night <laughs> as a nor'easter rattled the street lamps of Kingsley Boulevard and in walked Clarence Clemens. <laughs> I'd been, uh, I'd been enthralled by the sax sounds of King Curtis and Junior Walker and had searched for years for a great rock and roll saxophonist. And that night, Clarence walked in, walked towards the stage, and he rose, towering to my right on the Prince's tiny stage about the size of this podium. And then he unleashed the force of nature that was the sound and the soul of the big man. And, um, in that moment, you know, I knew, I knew that my life had changed. Um, miss you, love you, big man. We wish you were here with us tonight. This would mean a great, great deal to Clarence. Um, an honorable mention and shout out to Ernie Boom Carter. The drummer who played on one song only, Born to Run. <laughs> but he picked a good one. Picked a good one. So here's to you, Ernie. Thank you. And thank you, of course, Max Weinberg and Roy Bitten answered an ad in the Village Voice. <laughs> and they beat out 60 other drummers and keyboardists for the job. It was the indefatigable almost dangerously dedicated Mighty Max Weinberg and the fabulous flying fingers of Professor Roy Bitten. They refined and they defined the sound of the E Street Band that remains our calling card around the world to this day. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Max. They are my professional hitmen. I love you both. Then, <laughs> Ten years later, Nils Lofgren and Patty Scalfa joined just in time to assist us with the rebirth of Born in the USA. Nils, one of the world's great, great rock guitarists with the choir boy's voice, has given me everything he's had for the past 30 years. Thank you, Nils. So much love. And Patty Scalfa. A Jersey girl came down one weekend from New York City and sat in with a local band, Cats on the Smooth Surface, and Bobby Bandiera at the Stone Pony. And she sang a killer version of the Exciter's Tell Em. She had a voice that was filled with a little Ronnie Spector, a little Dusty Springfield, and a lot of something that was her very, very own. After she was done, I walked up, I introduced myself to her at the back bar. We grabbed a couple of stools and we sat there for the next hour 
or 30 years or so. And uh, <laughs> talked about music and tattoos and everything else. So we added my lovely redheaded woman, and she broke the boys' club. Now, I wanted our band to mirror our audience. And by 1984, that meant grown men and grown women. But her entrance freaked us out so much that the opening night of the, the Born in the USA tour, I, I asked her to come into my dressing room and to see what she was going to wear. You know? so, and she had on kind of a, just a slightly feminine T-shirt. And uh, I stood there and kind of sweating. At my feet, I had a little Samsonite luggage bag that I carried with me. And uh, I kicked it open, and it was filled with all my smelly, sweaty T-shirts. And I said, uh, just pick one of these. <laughs> It'll be fine, you know. Um, she's not wearing one tonight. So, <laughs> but anyway, Patty, I love you. Thank you for your beautiful voice. Changed my band and my life. Where are you? There. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Thank you for our beautiful children. So, uh, real bands, real bands are made primarily from the neighborhood, from a real time and a real place that exists for a little while and then changes and is gone forever. They, they're made from the same circumstances, the same needs, the same hungers, culture, from the same need of a love to cover over hurt. They're forged in the search of, for something more promising than what you were born into. These are the elements, the tools, and these are the people who built a place called East Street. Now, East Street was a dance, was an idea, was a wish, was a refuge, was a home, was a destination, was a gutter dream, and finally, it was a band. We struggled together, and sometimes we struggled with one another. We bathed in the glory and often the heartbreaking confusion of our rewards together, we enjoyed health, and we've suffered illness and aging and death together. We took care of one another when trouble knocked, and we hurt one another in big and small ways. But in the end, we kept faith with each other. And one thing is for certain, as I've said before in reference to Clarence Clemens, I told a story with the E Street Band that was and is bigger than I ever could have told on my own. And I believe that that, that settles that question. For that is the hallmark of a rock and roll band. The narrative you tell together is bigger than any one of you could have told on your own. That's the Rolling Stones. That's the Sex Pistols. That's Bob Marley and the Whalers. That's James Brown and his famous flames. That's Neil Young and Crazy Horse. So I thank you, my beautiful men and women of East Street. You made me dream and love bigger than I ever could have without you. And tonight I stand here with just one regret. And uh, that's that Danny and Clarence aren't here with us tonight. Um, 16, uh, 16 years ago, a few evenings before my own induction, I stood in my darkened kitchen along with Steve Van Zandt. Steve was just returning to the band after a 15-year hiatus, and he was petitioning me to push the Hall of Fame to induct all of us together. And I listened, and the Hall of Fame had its rules, and I was proud of my independence. We hadn't played together in 10 years. We were somewhat estranged. We were just taking the first small steps of reforming 
We didn't know what the future would bring. And perhaps the shadow of some of the old grudges still held some sway. It was a conundrum, because we'd never been quite fish nor fowl. And Steve was, was quiet, but persistent. And at the end of our conversation, he just said, yeah, yeah, I understand. But Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, that's the legend. So I'm proud to induct into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame the heart-stopping, pants-dropping, hard-rocking, booty-shaking, love-making, earthquaking, Viagra-taking, testifying, death-defying, legendary E Street.